everybody how's it going tgif my name is david castillo welcome to the age of quarantine super good to be here i'm uh hanging out with oliver lead singer of the band ilsa um if you're not familiar with ilsa they are a true powerhouse metal band doomy nasty with a bit of a i'd say like a bit of a punk snarl an edge to them from the DC area. Super good. Um, here we are. Hey, how's it going? Hey, pretty wow, good. How's it going? A whole new dude. <laughs> yeah. This is, not, uh, this is not what I was expecting. Holy shit. Yeah, it's Orion. And I don't have a beard. <laughs> so, Ryan, I don't have a beard. Orion, welcome to the Age of Quarantine. Thank you very much for joining us. I've been a fan of Ilsa's for quite some time. We have a bunch of friends in common. Um, and, you know, I've been at Vita since day one, so I've seen you play at the bar plenty of times, man. So thank you for taking the time out to, to speak with us. And uh, here at the Age of Quarantine, you know, we're just trying to get into people's journey through music. And so you come from a really interesting place. And I want to just kind of get into all that. So were you born and raised in like the D.C. area? Are you like a native? Are you from, from around that part? No, I'm a military brat. I uh, kind of like grew up all over the place. Uh, but um, living in the D.C., Maryland, DMV area was sort of the longest that I've been anywhere. Um, oh, okay, cool. So it hasn't been like kind of a, it was more of an adult life decision as opposed to an early in life decision. Well, I guess I say that, but I mean, I was there for for all of high school stuff. So in a lot of ways, I do feel like I did grow up in the same stuff. Got, so. got it. So like a, a big part of the formative years. I mean, high school is really big, especially yeah, to, totally. to, to music taste. So when you were like really young, what was your kind of like earliest introductions to music and, and stuff of, of that nature? Was there anything when you were like a real little kid that really stick out to you? Or what made you kind of gravitate towards music? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, music, like, I, I, I'm pretty, like, uh, have a, a sort of, like, broad taste that sort of go, all, all, like, uh, a, a little bit of everything. I'm kind of getting feedback. Should I put headphones on? Do you think that would be easier to, to hear me? I hear you loud and clear, but if oh. you feel like it, that's totally cool, man, you know? No, you no, can... As long as you can hear me. Yeah, uh, but I, when I did first time in D.C. and stuff, I was a freshman in high school. Uh, my high school had sort of like a, uh, you know, uh, punk scene there. There was like already some bands of like upper class stuff. And so that was really like when I felt I, I like got into like was more the idea of being around people and making friends and stuff. And that's always been like a really important um, person. Cool. Um, so like, like a little bit of like the community like, aspect. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. The, but I, I, and it still is. I mean, I feel like that the, you know, like it's it's sort of crazy to see where we're at now and stuff. But uh, yeah, the idea of like building a community in a scene or a scene or whatever, like I, I don't really care about like ever since like the hardcore stuff. It's kind of like been pretty diverse since then, and so that was like something that I always appreciated about it was that it wasn't really a city where there was like one strong sound that was coming out of it. There was a ton of bands that played. I mean, like. Um, uh, grew up going to sh in, in high school, going to sh Chris Morris house. I was uh, doing the Gruder Grind and stuff, and like um, going into the, the DC and you know, like uh, um, my, my first show there was at the Wilson Center. Their last show they had, uh, um, so it's kind of catching the tail end of like what was happening there. But you know, with bands like Page Ninety Nine and Majority Rule playing stuff, so for me it was like I kind of just was able. To get in and this really creative and like um fertile like uh local stuff so yeah that's i mean and that's that's amazing because uh, i mean you know, dc has a very storied history of underground music things of that nature you know and really prevalent obviously with sort of the fugazi effect a little bit and stuff like that did anything predate kind of punk for, for you or is punk really like the thing where you were like i'm defining my music taste now were you into like or or some maybe like big bands that you were into that were kind of gateway bands you know oh, like uh i mean i always loved kiss 
and uh, I always loved that they might be giants because my older cousin was into them, and like kind of like uh, even a, a band like that, like on major labels and stuff, but it was like harder to find at record stores and sort of got me interested in sort of like seeking out stuff that what was like weaker and harder to find. Um, I mean, I, I feel like uh, uh, in a lot of ways, like, um, you know, uh, just being into the idea of like collecting records in general kind of helped me to sort of like, um, ha have like a broader case. My dad had, the first record I ever had was Johnny um, Cash uh, Live at San Quentin. And like uh, that album is still one of my favorites. Uh, and, you know, like it kind of like, I like the, the sound of it. And, but I also just loved how like it sounded. And a after that, like I just kind of was always in just looking for like cool records. Basically. So, I mean, getting into metal and stuff, a lot of like early like heavy metal and, and stuff that the cover is like so on it. Like Judas Priest's album covers were like fine. Like I found the. Uh, Live at uh, what's the one band um, uh, unleashed in the and yeah like, unleashed I, in the East. I still have it. It's so beat up. I've never bought another copy of it because I just like love that. Like I found it at a thrift store and I just like, was like, holy shit! Like this looks like fucking awesome. And you know, like that was like I'm sure had something to do with it as well. Sure. So you were kind of enamored with the hunt of yeah of, of finding records and stuff kind of early on because I mean you know. Um, I, if, how old are you, Oliver? Uh, or I'm sorry, or I'm sorry, 34. 34. So yeah, I mean, you know, I'm 37. We grew up around, you know, the same ages. It's nothing, everything wasn't at your fingertips. So it was, it was about to hunt and it still sort of is too. Cause there is a lot of stuff not on the internet people. Like, you know, you have to go around and still take a look. There's a lot more to find out there, but that is definitely like a, a real formative experience and the kind of uh, adventures you can have looking for stuff is, is really like formative, right? Like you remember that thrift store and getting that Judas Priest record. Oh yeah. And like r lately, like, I, I mean, it, it, lately I say like probably in the past 10 years, like there's been a lot of like all stuff that I've gotten into. Like there's this label that was actually from around here called Ross. Right? That was like one of the first kind of like, I don't know, I, I, I guess kind of like gangster um, dance hall stuff where it was like young man and stuff where they were like actually thinking about robbing people and stuff like that. And like um, Ross was like a, a label that was run out of Wheaton, Maryland. It was like, you know, not too far from where I am now and just like right outside of DC and stuff. So, but you can just find them at the front door and shit. Now. Um, I mean, shit, with this record, um, the cover, we, we based it on um, Dead Brain Cells um, titled record. Which was like a uh, fine for me. Kind of got me into the So, yeah, there you go. So, that's pretty sweet. So, like you were saying, you know, obviously you settled in during kind of high school and then you sort of came upon this sort of like early 2000s, late 90s sort of hardcore DC scene, page 99, majority rule, some really amazing bands coming out of that era and stuff what was your kind of introduction to that scene and do you have any kind of cool memories of like early shows or things like that what were some moments that were like huh like i really this is my thing like i like this and maybe i want to even you know participate in whatever this this is right because we didn't all know what we were kind of getting ourselves into <laughs> oh yeah well diy aspect like a huge part of it like is uh, um yeah uh, it's not unique to DC, but I feel like DC was fostered it, and um, I, I feel like that. Uh, yeah, that that's always been something that um, you know, an inspiration to me to just try it myself. But like, yeah, bands like 1905 from around here. Like, um, I like. I, I there was sort of like this uh, um, kind of like uh, anarcho punk sort of um, thing going on, uh, and you know, like that was like really. Thing to me and like especially as like a young crusty being into bands like nausea and osrock like you know, um like, like winter and shit like that and stuff but like i, I feel like uh yeah just as a young punk like it, there was a lot of bands around here like in baltimore a great band apolitical ground yeah i remember them for sure i was growing up i was like you know 
New York area. So like I would go, I saw Asra and Coney Island High with oh, awesome with fucking uh, yeah with subhumans. Uh, and you know I, I've seen some of that stuff. And for me too, um, just kind of like you and I think the experiences of you and your bandmates. You know you have talked about kind of punk being first and then sort of getting into metal. I was sort of into like, you know, Black Sabbath and like big metal of the time where Guns N' Roses and stuff. And then I kind of went to punk was my first underground music. And then I kind of climbed in back sort of to metal in this sort of circuitous way. But I loved all of that stuff, going to ABC, checking out stuff. And I seen A Political back in the day, 1905, <laughs> giving me uh, like mad flashbacks of, of things of, of that nature. So getting into into that sort of stuff punk was obviously first for you and stuff like that so when you first started playing music what was that sort of endeavor like did you already you know come from a musical background or family and stuff or was like playing punk kind of like hey i i, I see peers of mine doing this i'm gonna try it out uh no it was like it was kind of like it's it's hard to say because also like that i, don't, I can only really myself in the band like um, you know, the, the other people in the band that are the closest age to me are Brendan and Dylan, who are brothers. And um, they're, they like, I basically grew up down the street from them, you know, living when I, once I was in D.C. or Maryland. And uh, they, they, like, um, were always in metal. So they were, like, my metalhead friends when I was into punk. So there was, like, that cross-fertilization from when we were, like, fucking, like, 15 years old and stuff. Like, I remember, like, living like black Sabbath on his computer on his like de you know like desktop computer and just being like holy shit this is like fucking awesome and stuff like uh and yeah like they were they, like helped to guide my battle tastes and stuff they were like in, like you know they, they saw emperor what came to like be king up in new york ever like back in like you know 2003 or something um so like they they were like really the ones that kind of like were turned on to the stuff and sort of like helped to like Died my taste. Sure, so. and, that, and that's always kind of. I, I feel like a lot of that is the way it works, and even still, too. Like, if my friends are into something, I'm gonna check it out, and I'm gonna like listen it in that way. Like, there's no publication or post or anything in the world that means more to me than like my homie who I like and like love and respect, just being like, "Yo, this band is sick," and I'm like, "Okay, we're gonna listen to it." Okay, you know what I mean? Because you have that sort of thing. And I have def different people in my life too have sort of like pulled me in different directions to listen to different things. And um, I think that's always really good. Like you said, like sometimes these things happen concurrently. Sometimes it's discovering things sort of sequentially, you know, it, it, it's all sort of different. So you were in high school, you were doing that stuff. Did you have any kind of like bands before, uh, like, you know, you were joining up with Ilsa, like what was, uh, you know kind of your early like music playing days like were you always a singer things of that nature yeah well we had a band like from when i was 18 on that how i met joshy who runs in else um and that was called time of the wolf um, kind of just a more like black metal thrash like sort of black thrash and um that uh that was from like 2006 to right around 2008 when, when ilsa started um, and, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun with that band and it was style and stuff, but we were, um, all, like, um, getting the feel of what we wanted to play in terms of metal and stuff. Um, and we put out like a great record ourselves with that. It's just a self-titled album on YouTube and stuff, Time of the Wolf. Um, but named after the Michael Henry movie, so, like, that sort of like started our sort of like love and stuff too and we all bonded over that and part of practice would be like watching like some action movie like afterwards and stuff and hanging out and like you know the the hangout process of it like you were saying it's like that's when like you get the best band recommendations and stuff when you're just like chilling with somebody and they're like all right like oh i got something you got to. like you know it just comes out of nowhere and you're like yeah that's this is fucking perfect like <laughs> yeah yeah definitely i'm like there's sometimes i listen to a band and i'm just like oh, I have to, like, I'm like, yo, Enriquez, yo, listen to this, dude, you know, like, because he's the co-host of my sh of, of the show, you know what I mean? It's like his show, I'm, you know, part of it and stuff, and already we're all, 
we all play music together. So that's always the thing too. That I hear things and I think of people, you know, at this point. So that's definitely like a, a big thing. So yeah, like you were in this band, you did it right. And before Ilsa, and that was kind of like getting your feet wet, like understanding the band dynamic too, right? Because it was your, your first band, you know, obviously you kind of like learn a lot of stuff from just, you know, playing shows and, you know, putting out your own record recording stuff like you know there's a learning curve to all this stuff you don't just kind of like Boop, okay i got it i'm like an ilsa now it's cool um and, and stuff of that nature what did you want to sort of was there things besides musically because obviously Ilsa is different musically that you wanted to sort of change up when you kind of started Ilsa with these guys and like we're like oh okay maybe we'll want to take this particular approach or was it just more of a continuation of and getting better of what you were already doing. Yeah, well, um, Crown of the Wolf basically ended Dylan, who was pl playing guitar in that time, and he's like kind of our new guitar player. He was like, you know, in Crown of the Wolf before, and basically we sort of joined this again. But uh, he got into like a fight at the course and like punched his hand through like a glass, like a, a window through the glass and cut all the in his, in his wrist. And uh, so it also kind of just started as like, uh, band to sort of be like a side project to, to like to like hold to make we're able to like keep playing together and stuff until Tom got back together and um and then like other you know like other things happened and like some of the people came back to Ilsa like Tim um who really was the sort of backbone of Tom of the Wolf with John um they um uh, you know like uh he went away for a little bit and stuff and so basically ended up being the primary focus even though it sort of started like something that we were just doing on the side and the main motivation also was just like we wanted to be, like heavy and simple and that was like it like we wanted to be playing like to just do metal that like it wasn't like really about trying to sound like anybody else or, like trying to set out to do something new reinvent the wheel or whatever but it was like to just play like something that was going to be fun and that wasn't going to be like super technical because time of the world had sort of gone more in that direction. We just wanted to do like something that was going to just be like, more fun for us and stuff. And that was always, you know, like we've always kept that as the focus of the band is just like making it fun for people in it. And that's sure. That's and then work. that's that's a great thing. Well, first of all, there's two things that they stand out. First of all, is that it was almost sort of like a, literally like an accident, right? Like in, in a way that kind of set the course to do to do that in, in one way right like oh boy totally. fucks up his hand in in some fisticuffs and then like okay cool he can't play so we might as well do something but i think there's something in there that's that's really i think uh interesting as well is the fact that you're like we wanted to do something a little bit easier to play and something that felt um you know fun for us to do you know it's not always just about it's cool to like learn about the edge of your abilities and maybe push yourself to kind of do certain things. But sometimes it's also good to realize like, okay, I, I can do certain things, but I don't have to. I can play something else and, and, and just that feels like right. You know, there's certain musicians I know who are absolutely incredible, can do like all sorts of things, but they just want to be like, you know, they're like, this is good. It sounds great, right? Like, why fuck with that? Um, do you guys find yourself getting sort of enamored with that kind of feeling? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, uh, you know, we don't want to be like, I feel like we feel ourselves ourselves pulled in different directions and stuff with it. And, um, and I, but it's also, um, yeah, it's like, it kind of makes me think of like impressionism versus like uh, realism thing. It's not like, we're not trying to just like create like a picture perfect copy of something it's more of just getting like vibe getting like a feel and i mean i think the feeling and the emotion is like, the biggest part of it and like you know like i wouldn't call ourselves like an emotional band ever like but or like you know like or depressive or something like that but like in a lot of ways like i kind of do feel like there there is sort of like that like, underlying feeling of it uh, that, that's sort of like i feel like what us more than trying to push ourselves as musicians or anything like that but it's just trying to like make something that we are like 
doing? You know, it's just like kind of yeah, dumb. that you're so. connecting with. I mean, and, and I think that that's true. I think sometimes it's just uh, you're looking for something that's visceral for you, and that hopefully translates to to audiences and you know and and you know and fans and stuff like that. They could feel that. And to me, Ilsa's a super visceral band. I mean, anybody who's seen you guys. It, the show, it's it might be you know in the doom sort of category as for as far as speed, but not really as far as intensity. I feel like it can give you you can feel like the background of punk and, and hardcore and stuff like that has been sort of woven, uh, you know, into the kind of the fabric of the sound. And is is that just basically? It seems like it's just because you that's where you guys came from, right? So it still kind of rears its head a little bit. Yeah, I'd say so. Like, um, Joshy was in this great band, Exosis, from around here. Um, and, um, you know, like, his background is in, definitely out of punk and hardcore. Tam, who's back, who's in the band, and his, he's, he comes, comes out of, like, a punk and hardcore background and stuff. But, um, and, you know, um, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, all, it's kind of all over the place. But Sherrod's not really from that and, like, um, is a little bit older than ever and stuff and Joshy's a lot older than me and Brandon and Dylan but Joshy and Tim and Sherrod are, are all of them, I think probably all of them are close to 10 years older than Brandon so it's sort of like we're it, almost like a not I wouldn't say multi-generational but like I always looked up to like um to Joshy and stuff as being like big punk like a you know grown up punk or whatever like the guy in the band like who's been on tour before like knows what to do like that so um uh, uh yeah that's a uh, um you know in uh the, the like way i've looked at it i guess yeah for sure i think that in a lot of ways you know uh Artie's about 10 years older than i am and we played in primitive weapons Sega there and then chris is like chris is like four years older than him and i'm like the youngest one in the band too so like I grew up going to see their bands, right? And so, and I'm super influenced by a lot of the stuff that they've done. So I know that that dynamic too, you know, like where you're like, well, I'm like playing with the dude, the people that were like in my scene that were like, I thought, you know, I saw them up there and stuff like that. So that's always kind of like a cool thing and a bit of a trip to kind of like get uh, acquainted with that. Were When you were in the prior band, were you always singing? It was always vocals for you? Yeah, it, and, it, and with Tom of the Wolf, it was sort of weird. Like, I didn't really have any, like, I don't really know why they asked me to be able to try, like, I, you know, I tried out for that. Uh, they were, I, I didn't know really, I feel like the bass there, this guy Brian Redbeard, who'd been in a bunch of bands around here. Um, and I, I, they kind of invited me um, because he thought I might be a good singer for some reason. And I, like, I had, you know, in high school, like we, I had friends that had music equipment, mess around and stuff with like heavy stuff or whatever. But like you know, when I like that, it it kind of caught me off guard. That they wanted me to try it, and so I just sort of like did. You know, I didn't really have any like, and I still don't really kind of like technique or anything that I went in with. And I knew that I wanted whatever. It was more just like you know, like, make it sound thick and stuff. And, like, at the, you know, when we started, I think it was a little bit, like, rapier and more towards like, the sort of, like, black metal side of it that I brought in from kind of the wolf. Um, but, like, as it's gone on, it's gotten, I think, a little bit more natural. And, like, I can't really, like, care so much about trying to sound like one particular style or another. Sure. Like, about us, too, is, like, you know, like, we're not, like, we're not, like, a worship band. We're not trying to sound like something that's already been, you know, like there's not one era of metal that we hold above others. Like I, I love like heavy metal from the 80s, crash. I love fucking death metal from the 90s. I love black metal from the 90s. You know, like all of this, like is a spectrum of, of metal that I, you know, I celebrate. But there's not one spot where I stop and I'm like, this is the end. like this is this is the end all be all and like, where we're gonna stand and stuff. And like, you know, in that sense, like you know we are like i think people have had sort of a hard time figuring out where to place us and like calling us like sludgy or, like doom or whatever. um i mean we celebrate doom being from maryland you know uh, maryland doom, you know up forever here but uh we're not a maryland doom. we don't sound like a doom band like you know we are and stuff so 
um, I'm happy to just sort of float around like the ether. You know, I don't care where, where we live when it comes to like fitting in and stuff the, with the scene. And I, I think that's part of the and stuff. I also feel, you know, it, uh, it, uh, it'll, that, that can only take you so far. And there's like so many bands that have that I've seen throughout the years that have been like so huge that I've loved and thought were great. People were going to remember forever and they just get forgotten and stuff. And like, you know, I, I don't have any doubt that that won't be my, but like, I also feel like that, you know, you just like, um, it, it's, it's hard to tell what people are going to really like hold on to comes to, to music or connect with and stuff like I think it's like, I think it's important I, to be yourself too right yeah yeah that's why you know, all I can do is what I know so yeah exactly and and to be yourself and also to create something that um you know is above a bit uh, above like influence in a way you know what I mean where it's like we're not painting inside the lines or coloring by numbers here a little bit right we're, we're maybe trying to kind of move past a little bit of like the, the things that you know we have there if not it's just sort of like uh it's like a period piece you know it's like uh watching a film from like you know the victorian era you know it's like okay that can be kind of fine you know i love it, it. Be, yeah it's just not, you know, but, it's not like, but at the same time it's like is that going to be the new thing or the thing that pushes maybe the culture or the band or whatever into the future you have to maybe continue to to kind of create and innovate so and ilsa has been going for quite some time 2008 is the is the the beginnings of it right yeah, so it took you know time and, and stuff to kind of start kind of developing you know you, the sound of the band and feeling like that what how did it really come together as far as like a songwriting process and stuff like that because it seems obviously there's been a couple of members some different changes they're like a core group or so somebody really like takes the reins on that how does that come together yeah well i felt like the demo there's kind of like some confusion about what our, our first album is uh, um there's like a we basically like the, i would consider this new record prayer to be our fifth record um um or our, yeah because maggie's hungry gets called our first record but that's like really just the, we re-recorded re some songs on it for um Tutti Colori del Buio, like all the colors of art, which I would consider to be our first record. And so with that one, that, that was like kind of, um, we'd already done the demo and I felt like we were um, all playing and practicing at the Fortress and there was all these shows around us and stuff and just felt like a really creative period. And that album, like we recorded three days uh, in a friend's garage in DC and um, it you know, uh, like, for whatever reason, that it, like, that record, like, uh, just was, seemed to be the one that people actually, like, were, were into. And it sounds, it, it's, it's a lot different than Magazine Hungry. Like, Brian, our friend that um, recorded it for the time, um, I don't know, he, he had a, just the perfect touch for it, I guess. And, like, I think probably practicing regularly and just tightening ourselves up and, really working on the songs and stuff. Um, Garrett, who played guitar and did a lot of like the really weird early records, um, he was like, you know, coming from like a punk background too, but metal as well, um, but just had like a really great mind when it came to like really fucking weird structures and like solos and shit. And I feel like him and Brendan on that record just really came up with like cool songs. Um, and, uh, um, you know, we sort of lucked out because Fenris put us as one of his like bands of the week, and we just self released it ourselves at that point. And after that, that was like when we got our first opportunity to like you know work with the label. Uh, that, yeah, that and look, man, <laughs> I was, I was the band of the week is a, is a big is a, is a big nod. You know, we've had oh, I got that the best. Like, I was walking out of an Iron Maiden concert and I got a text that said Fenris made us his band of the week. I was like already like elated from like coming to this concert that my friend had won tickets to off the radio free, and mm -hmm. she like t asked me if I wanted to go with her and like and we were, like you know like it was fucking great, awesome shit. Like walking out like oh yeah, Fenris made us his band. 
speak. Like, cool. Like, how's the night? <laughs> yeah, dude, you were like on Icarus, like going straight to the fucking sun, man. You were like ready, <laughs> ready to go. What a fucking week! Amazing. The best. It. Ben Riz. I mean, we're covering all the bases of your yeah. classic metal collection. Dude, Watch the best it. part of that show was like we when we were waiting in line to get. Uh, there was like these other guys that were there. And the I heard the like ticket taker be like, "Oh, I'm sorry, guys. These are for Rush. That's next week." And they're like, "What? No!" Like they like miss bought like fucking uh, Iron Maiden <laughs> was for Rush. Like, oh <laughs> uh, man, I would have already I already would have loved the Rush concert. Already, yeah, I would have been stoked for either one, but I could see why they'd be pissed if they were already there. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So Fenris put you as the band of the week. Obviously, he's a you know big figure in, in, in the scene, you know, Dark Throne, all of this, you know, an architect of, of black metal, really, uh, and stuff like that. So that sort of got people talking, I'm sure, right? And so did you feel like a bit of a noticeable change with, like, attendance at shows, things like that? Did you feel like, oh, okay, now we got, we're, we're like, in a little bit of a different... No, not around here. And, like, and it was, it's hard to even know if that was really, like, what did anything. But our, our, we, we had a friend, Dan, um, who was from D.C., who'd moved out to Portland, um, crappy Dan, he was, as he was known in D.C. Um, but he started Asian. And uh, so we were like, already friends with Dan and stuff. And like, I think he'd heard it. I can't say, like, you know, I'm, I don't necessarily had any like that, but I'm sure he heard um, Like, he started this and was basically in having a feed one of their early early releases and stuff which so um yeah, he did great like uh um, i think they did um two for uh, uh, um was basically got our sort of helped us sort of get our first home when it came to a pool. So. yeah that's great so um so that, that was like kind of like the label thing and stuff like that did you guys you know, as sort of things are going, was it like, okay, now we're going to start like hitting tour a bit more, things of that nature? How did those sort of decisions go? Because, you know, obviously, like, there are different priorities at different times, you know, and as you grow older, too, those things happen, you know, being in a band, obviously, isn't the sort of like, you know, flat journey, there's always like different things to sort of negotiate. I mean, uh, I know that you guys have done some extensive touring, and then pulled back a little bit more, and so on and so forth. How has that sort of been as the band has sort of grown? Uh, I feel like we've, like, never really toured that much. I mean, we've gotten to go, we, we've had over the years, over 12 years, you know, like, been able to do a little bit. I, I sort of wish we'd been, we haven't gone to Europe or anything like that yet. We've never gone to South America, you know, like, anything. We went to Canada with um, in 2013, a lot of fun. Um, we only did our first escort um, in like 2018 um but, so we sort of like anything we've been doing a little, a little more than, than ever before um, in the past years um because everybody in the band has other jobs and stuff and nobody like uh as much as we would love for, for this to be our like you know way of supporting ourselves i feel like we've also never approached it that way so it's been for fun and something that we do to hang out and to be able do something special i mean we've only ever played i think maybe like i could probably count all the fests we've ever done on my on my hand like the we did um psycho in vegas um last year which was like i've still been thinking about it like it was so like just was it felt like a dream or whatever and then like before that i feel like the biggest one that we had done was you know like death fest in 2013 and uh you know like that was like uh for me it was you know cool uh, being Maryland and stuff, you know, I felt like I was, I was happy we had that opportunity. So. Yeah, sure. Shout was, out to Evan. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that that's, that's true. I guess, you know, to me, it's like, oh, I see some dates on the West Coast a little bit more, you know, like it opened up a little bit. It's not like, oh, I was saying you're like worldwide touring machine, but, you know, it just opened up a little bit more, which I was like, oh, that's a little bit different because normally I'd seen you guys sort of do things a little bit more, you know, sporadically you know, and differences, it's like, oh, they, it seems like they're trying to play a little bit more now, you know what I mean? So I was like, oh, yeah. you know, is it, you know, obviously 2020, it's like, but, <laughs> you know, when when we're, we're, when we are trying to do, do those things. 
So who in, uh, in is, is there like, you know, just gonna kind of get back to the writing question, because uh, I want like, who really is there anybody who's like, been like the through line, like the person who's sort of like, been a, a chief like songwriter of Ilsa? Or it has it really been different throughout these different periods? Yeah, or is there anybody who's been sort of like more consistent, because like you were saying, in those early records and other things, you know, certain members really contribute to maybe if you like certain aspects, you know, which is true, you know, every band's got periods, right? Sabbath, the uh, you know, you might like the Tony Martin records. I don't know, but um, that's that's sort of the thing. So has there been like that consistent factor too? Is that like Joshy? Um, probably in big part, yeah. I, I was, um, but I I feel like it, you know, like it would be hard to really pin it down to one person. Sure. Like uh, on different records, it sort of leaned in different directions. Um, uh, so, um. I think in the since Dylan has joined the band, I think that he's been like, and and everybody's been excited to have him be like a contributor uh, and ha like hear ideas and stuff. On this record, like he's d doing a lot of the solos on the album are his, um, and uh, you know like we've been a lot of the newer stuff we've been working on um, have have come from like ideas that he's had and stuff, which I'm excited about. I think projecting that like new person to the mix and stuff is like um has been fun and it hasn't been something that's been like an immediate thing like he joined the band right after fortress so he had to like learn songs from that album and sort of like you know um ease his way into, into like the band and stuff and i think now we're at a point after this record you now he, he definitely helped with, with a lot of songs um, we're ready to like, you know, that he's ha got ideas to take a more active role and stuff. But yeah, I mean, Josh writes songs now on guitar. That was, uh, on this record, I think there's a number of songs that he wrote himself. Um, it's kind of hard to remember, like, who, I, you know, like, who, whose song it starts out as or what it, like, grows into, um, you know everybody's uh but that's really that shows sort of the approach is that it's like this super communal sort of thing when it comes to Elsa, right because it's interesting to me or a band i feel like i understand what Elsa is and sort of like it's sort of core cool at its core and like i expect certain things from that from the outside looking in so it's kind of interesting to me to know that there's all these sort of like different you know kind of contributors and parts as well because it's sort of had like a little bit of a growth even though it changes over time there's a bit of a, like a growth and consistency to it it's not like all of a sudden it's like some super hard left or something like that um as far as like the artwork and the presentation of Ilsa I've always thought it's great obviously it leans a little bit into like the kind of horror but the, the prayer cover is really like super kind of graphic and like like beautiful and uh, i love corpse fortress too which is kind of like a different look but who kind of in the in the band i'm always curious about this is sort of like in charge of the aesthetic for ilsa because it's always been super fucking cool since i saw you guys with coffins in 2014 you know or whatever that's all joshy I, you know that's that i mean I've, I've done i've helped with uh artwork on every record um but he's definitely he's like he'll have a pretty strong sense of response and I, like I'm always happy with it, you know I mean I, I don't ever want anyone else's art on a other than his mine and on this one I tried to vigil that's on the album uh, yeah we kind of based it on the uh I said earlier the dead brain cells self-titled record has this like great like I mean a red sort of like foil that really like catches the light and like the little light it on it um and uh every album has sort of had like uh inspiration cover behind it but also like been you know like it, it's been like something that we like doing i always wanted to pop up out which fell in the law as a pop-up uh, so like yeah i saw that at vitus i remember because <laughs> on the table like that and i was like damn that's so tight and i remember and i wasn't sure if it was josh who i talked to but uh you, you played with uh what was the i think the band that i'm thinking of um 
from Indiana doom band kind of had a dude with like dreads and he kind of loved hip hop and stuff. I'm trying to remember what the name of that band was, but you guys had, had been to Vitus at different times. So I think it was that show or when you were playing with seven sisters asleep. But um, I remember going to the merch table and just being like, wow, this is really cool. But like, you know, who, who did this? And, and, I think it was yeah, probably Josh. He was like, "Oh, it's me!" Like, it, you know, I just saw him play. I was like, "Oh shit!" I always think that's really interesting when the people who are in the band also are like the main auteurs of the the graphic design. Because especially in metal too, I feel like it's not like a. There's a lot of times where it's not like a really like you know like you're a solo artist or something, and it's like you like you the person really like out front, right? There's like a lot of metal bands and stuff like create the aura, the image and stuff like that. And you guys have always had this uh, really tight thing. Is there any, you know, like you said, you, you had a couple of influences here. There seems to be a big horror movie sort of influence. Is everybody in the band kind of like aficionados in that sort of realm and stuff like that? Some, you know, between like some samples that are on the records and, and stuff like that too. I'm like, oh, I see how that sort of is. And sometimes it can be even a little bit tongue in cheek. Um, Talk to me about kind of using that stuff and, and, and that part of the culture. Obviously, metalheads love horror. Yeah, horror movies, horror novels. I mean, uh, uh, I just borrowed this, like, Paperbacks from Hell book, which kind of even has, like, a similar, like, to the new record. But, like, yeah, that, like, embossed, like, 80, like, horror cover. And, like, for me, like, the covers was always, like, even with horror movies, that was what got me into it was the covers. And, you know, going back maybe to music, too, stuff, like, it's just always been an important part of it, like just drawing you, like something that make people like, want, what the fuck is this, you know, like, and uh, yeah, like I love that like 80s, like embossed, like horror novel cover with like, you know, like a gold foil, silver foil on it, and some weird painting that's like, you know, uh, just thick shit, and like, with, with like horror movies, it's the same way. Uh, I mean, I worked at a, a video for an exam for like years for five years in, in Maryland and, um we like you know everybody in the band had an account there and stuff and like was like just that that was like we had like the, the cult section before like you know like Amazon Prime whatever like uh and it, th that like having that um you know like the accessibility of that stuff and just being able to sort of like really explore it all and like dive but like at a point when like there wasn't stream or, or anything like that, like the video store we had to just like be lucky to have a store that had like a good horror section or something. And like luckily the one that I worked at had like, great horror and cult like movie. And I was able to like get like a probably like learn more about it than I really needed to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's and, and again it's a matter of like you know accessibility like you said like hey you know like you worked at the, at the at the good video store with a good section for it and your homies could come and pick stuff up and you're like dude i got this thing like you know my one of my best friends Corey, worked at this uh who's also very good friends with rj over shout out to rj over from a group <laughs> uh, and but Corey worked at this record store called utopia uh on long island and Man, Corey hooked my ass up, man. Like, you know, the first botch record I ever heard, the first fucking Dillinger Escape, first ass suck record I ever heard. I mean, like, I could go through the bands that I got from there. And, like, Corey was always able to listen to a lot of stuff because of that. And, therefore, I was able to start, you know, like, getting stuff from him and stuff like that. Little friends and fam discount, too, never hurt, you know. So th these sorts of things are like, really, really, yeah. really key. And also finding just like inspiration and finding stuff for, for your art and your, and your feeling like, you know, even now, like you got to just like listen and look at things, right? Like pretty simply, you know? And, uh, and that's just like, you know, the things like, it's, you're always like kind of feeding yourself uh, with that stuff. So for this one too, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, you guys have worked with some great labels, you know, 8389 and, and stuff like that, you know, Shad Sh Dom, I mean, like, really cool shit, you know, like, I love all of that stuff, you know, pulling teeth, integrity, 
all, all of the, those things. But for this, you know, new record, you guys are uh, over at Relapse, which I thought was a, a pretty cool look and stuff like that. How did that kind of come about? And, you know, how has it been sort of like, you know, putting out a record in this pandemic time is not the easiest thing, but this is a kind of a new relationship. How's it been going? Yeah, well, we never would have left A389 if Dom was still, you know, doing it. Uh, he, he sort of decided to um, fold the label. Which is totally understandable. Like, I don't even know how it, the way that he did. It, it was basically like, you know, a, I'd say a one-man operation, but you know, three or four-man operation. Um, but, like, yeah, it was like he was really um, putting it all in there. He told us that, that he wasn't going to be to do it anymore. Um, basically, I guess Eighth uh, Laps had already approached him previously and asked about about us, and not wanted to step on his toes and stuff. And um, when he when he told that, to, um, to, you know, it was it wasn't a difficult decision. Uh, we've never really had like I, I feel like as a DIY band and being on a on like a or whatever, it's never really been something that we were worried about like uh changing us or anything um you know this is always something that's like been that's our art not our our job it's, it's something that we do because we love it sure yeah totally absolutely and that's like it, keeping that priority and keeping the band kind of those things like level i think has led to the longevity right to kind of get to where you're at you know i've had conversations on here with steve on till and with you know Aaron Turner and with Dream Crusher and different things and it's like different people you know burnouts real depending on what you do or whatever have you and what the aims are and all those things are really important to kind of you know kind of keep things also going and I think that leads a little bit to the longevity for you guys to kind of place it in your lives in the right place right I feel like tour will kill a band like I mean that was like what Lemmy said was like that's how you know if you're real you know, like real bands tour or whatever like something along those lines like it was kind of stuck in my head but at the same time like yeah like I, a tour is like hard man and that's that'll like you know like it's hard to be around people for like every, all the time and stuff. I have a lot of respect for able to do that. but that was never our approach like our approach has always been to like write records like it was about the record you know, like putting albums and stuff like writing making music like it, it's not really like about going out and touring or um you know being able to um you know travel and like i would love to be able to do that like i, I you know like i i envy the bands that do it. um but we kind of come from like maybe a little bit of like a working class background in the sense of it like we all we also kind of like head bets, I guess, in terms of like you know we made sure that I, I've always had work outside of the band, and like made sure that I like support myself. Stuff. Um, I mean, uh, in that sense, I think that like has contributed a lot, to, like the longevity. I mean, I was li I lived in New York for six years, and we you know like COVID has been the longest break from playing. You know, even at, when I was like out of state. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know. I remember you coming around and stuff like that with with RJ, like different folks and stuff. And I was like, oh. I was a doorman at Acheron. Uh, like a bunch of shows there. Saw uh, tons of great shows at the uh, uh, Yeah, it was. It was long. Yeah, for sure. I totally remember that too. Um, you know, back in the day and stuff. And like I, when when you were around too, it was like when Vitus was really in its infancy as well too so i was just like living in the bar for the first couple of years as well so you know if you whenever you were there i was probably there uh you know hanging out and, and just you know doing shit but uh yeah absolutely and it was that was a pretty magical period i think in new york sort of underground music a lot of amazing sort of shit going on and stuff like that so um you know with prayer coming out now and stuff um, we have, you know, like about five, six, seven minutes left, depending on when we get kicked off by Instagram. But what's it been like releasing a record when you, you know, you kind of can't do the normal things that you do? Maybe, you, you know, you know, you guys aren't touring a ton, but you probably play some shows or whatever. Have you guys thought about any other things to sort of do or, or different ways to sort of engage the audience? It's a weird question. It's a sort of weird time, but 
how how does it sort of feel to just kind of like finally see this thing up but it's in this sort of setting i guess yeah and it all happened this year i mean we we went into recording at the big at like mid month by like what while we were in maryland started shutting down so we we um we, we were able to get everything done still have an extra day left like cut a day and so and um sort of like not sure like what i mean i was like all right it's recorded like I like I don't care for now it's done like it's out of my hands which is like kind of how I feel tonight too it's just like it's, it's over like it's out. like you know I'm fucking free um but, yeah like it's I'm, I'm I feel really lucky it's it's given me hope like all year like, it's fucking all going on as depressing as like, you know election wise the COVID is and, like I just feel like that it was like my like life jacket and like I was like really like anytime I felt like it, I was just all right. Well, you know, got this record coming out. I got to see how it looks. Like I make it look good and stuff. So, you know, like uh, not that I'm gonna like you know pull a dissection or something and go like off myself, but like, uh, that you know like I'm it, it, that was like I, we we lucked out. It was all just like you know happenstance, like timing in terms of this year being like able to able to get it done first of all, and then. Be, like have everything fall into place and stuff. I mean, we're we're just we're just sliding in there, like you know, it's like almost you know, like almost December, like getting it in right there. Yeah, well, I, you know, and we're appreciative for it, man. You know, uh, a lot of people push stuff back and things like that nature. We really all didn't know what the situation was going to be, but you know, what you said, I think, is really interesting. You know, I've been making music here at home and stuff like that, and you know, I, I was like. Sometimes it feels like kind of what's why or how or like what's sort of the point. You know, obviously by this, we had to take care of so much stuff with that. But it's nice to have a project too, right? To kind of have this sort of thing, like you were saying, that kind of keeps you going a little bit and like keeps that part of the mind active and, and good with that. I could totally relate to that as well and feeling like, oh, okay, let me let me see what the cover looks like and let me, you know, tweak some things and, and, and continue to kind of work and stuff. It um yeah, don't stop. Nobody should stop playing music. Everybody keep playing music. Like it, Yeah, exactly. It's sometimes it can be, it's, not the end all be all. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's like it can be difficult, but at the same time it, it can be nice to uh use it as the escape it's been, you know, that we, we, we normally have even though we can't congregate. Uh hopefully people are are making stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, getting together is the best part, and I feel like that, you know, spaces like you guys have and stuff, it's like, everybody's seeing now what's really important, and like, I don't know, if with music over the years and stuff, like, you can kind of feel like, oh, whatever, it's bullshit, or whatever, like, or, you know, like, Chris Wayne and stuff, and, but I feel like that, it, that it's just like, now more than ever, it's like, I, I feel like this year has just been like resaturation interests and stuff that can't do anything. Like everybody's fucking like pulling their books off their records, listening to shit stuff. So like, you know, hopefully we can like like I said, slide in there, you know, put it on, check it out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's totally true, man. It's like, yo, it's like you know, art is important, right? Everyone's engaging with it right now all the time. Even if you're watching us chat about what you're doing, go listen to the record. We're going to go listen to more music and watch films and, and do stuff like that. But we're sitting here like that. So when we all do sort of reemerge from this sort of COVID fog and stuff like that, I hope people are never coming that. And to, be, and, and, and to be kind to the arts a little bit, you know what I mean? It's not easy doing this shit. <laughs> Yeah, I I feel like we're stuck in this shit, man. This is the new reality. Fucking mm -hmm. sitting in my bed talking with you in the park. <laughs> who knows who else? However many people, but <laughs> yeah, for sure, it's a it's a it's a weird weird thing. But um, Orion, our time is coming to a close. I got the Instagram couple minute countdown. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us, man. Super fucking cool. Great to see you. The new you, you know, you look good. 
The record is fucking great, guys. Corpse Fortress was an an amazing record. Like honestly, I listened to that one like a whole fucking lot. I really like that. Thank you. And uh, that came out maybe what like eighteen? Yeah. I think that came out. And and I was like always liked Ilsa, but I was just like that hit some sort of gear for me, and I had that one on like a bunch. Um, so super sick, and I you know I heard the first two songs you guys really saw for prayer, and I got one of the uh the promos in my inbox so i can't wait to really sit down with it proper and check it out because i got the time to do that and everybody else would take some time to do it as well so read about sean sellers his life is fucked up and fuck the death penalty yeah sounds <laughs> I, I feel that for sure man so thank you very much you're the shit take care of yourself all right thanks Black 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 Black